Good evening and welcome to a special edition of Across the Pitch, where we welcome an extra special guest who uh, those of you in Phoenix are going to be very familiar with and excited to hear from, none other than Adam John, who has uh, gone and joined Atlanta United in the MLS this season, so we're going to talk with Adam today about uh, what he is looking forward to this season in Atlanta and, of course, reflect last season on the record-breaking year in Phoenix. So welcome to the show, Adam. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm missing the Phoenix weather right now. It's been raining all week here. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, it's been nice here, man, like in the 70s, sunny, you know, but you'll you'll probably be a little bit better off come this summer when it's like 110 here, I, I, I would imagine. I don't know. This humidity is no joke, I hear. <laughs> That's what I've heard about Atlanta. It does get kind of, uh, well, sweaty and stinky at times down there. <laughs> yeah, but Phoenix is toughened me up so I can take on anything. There you go, man. Love to hear that. That's excellent. Yeah, no, you're uh, you're going to be at least indoors in that uh, that big dome stadium that they have there in Atlanta. And we'll, uh, we'll talk about that here a little bit later. And uh, Hey, my name is Phil Kennedy, and it's Aaron Ayers and, and Matt Robards on the line here with me today. And uh, we have a lot of questions that we want to get through and a lot of uh, things that the fans here in town are wanting to hear. Uh, and, uh, of course, we want to get this uh, out of the way first because the, the big news in, in all of the MLS this week is the unfortunate situation where your teammate Joseph Martinez has suffered a season-ending injury and is probably not the way that you wanted to get playing time, but it certainly means that you're the guy that's uh, that's going to step in. So uh, how does it feel to be the guy stepping in for a former MVP? Well, like you said, um, it's a terrible injury, and I wouldn't wish it on anyone. But uh, I think he'll come back before the season ends. He is a, He's a tough guy. So um, he'll be he'll be back sooner than you think. And there's no there's no fill in his shoes. And um, you know I, I'm sure the club's looking to bring in reinforcements. So uh, all that stuff's out of my control. I can just uh, control what's in mine, and that's showing up, taking advantage of any. Adam, you talked about all you can do is what is what you can do on the field. I mean, spoken like a true professional and the little bit we got to know you um, last year as you were here is that you are, are a professional and it's great. When, what was it like 69th minute opening day in Nashville, which seemed like a really impressive crowd. I think I, I read somewhere around 60,000, you know, you, Mm -hmm. you see Joseph Martinez kind of coming off, um, you know, you, you get your name called, what what is does Frank DeBoer say anything yeah. to you before getting into that game? Yeah, well, it's pretty crazy because um, even though I've only known Joseph for a short time, uh, I know he doesn't he doesn't uh, stay down or he doesn't take injuries. So when he's when he goes down, you know it's for real. So when that happened, I immediately just started like sprinting uh, in the warm up area, and then he tried to get up. Ran back down the field to uh, defend, and then what does what does Frank DeBoer say to you? What's going through your mind? Well, uh, it's mostly tactical when he when he called me over. Just kind of uh, you know the game. We just need to see out the win, and he told me kind of how to defend, and you know my job when when they told me when they brought me in was to provide something different than how they usually play. And so that's kind of more direct kind of battle with the big center backs and um, and uh, bring my strength to the field. Right on, man. And, and you certainly did that in the game. Um, you know, we were watching here in Arizona, and I'll be honest, I was strictly watching uh, mainly just because you were you were on the team, you're on the bench, <laughs> and so hoping you'd get oh, in. That's awesome. I have I have no kind of allegiance to any MLS club, but um, it was a great seeing you on and you played really well. And I, I mean, for me, um, and I, I guess I could speak for Aaron and Phil, 
What is yeah. it like mm-hmm. to play in front of 60,000 people? You know, it's, uh, it's really loud. <laughs> but, uh, it's awesome. Uh, it's, it's kind of surreal. It's, you can't really hear anything. And um, you just have to kind of focus and, you know, think about a few, a few things that you can control and, and what, what you have in mind, like tactics and, and whatnot, because it's just, it's a different world uh, with that many people screaming and that atmosphere. It's, uh, it's awesome. And, and how much are you just looking forward then to stepping in front of the 70,000 plus uh, people in Mercedes Benz Stadium for the first time? Uh, second time, actually. Second time, right. Because uh, you guys did CCL first, there. First right? time, uh, <laughs> uh, playoffs 2017. Oh, yes, that's right. Uh, yeah, you were on the opposite end there. there so <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but no, I'm really, really excited to see that as a member of the club and like it's the best there is, um, at least in, in the U.S. And I, it probably rivals a lot of the European setups. So uh, they really do things right here in Atlanta, and that's uh, awesome to see. That's great, man. That was one of the things that I heard is that in terms of there was a survey for what are the the most cool teams in the world, and Atlanta United was actually ranked as the the second coolest team in the world just because of the the fan culture, and it was ranked up there, I think, PSG and, and Liverpool and Atlanta United were the top three, so that that's big wow. company there. Are you saying it wasn't Phoenix yeah. Rising? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, Phoenix Rising, I mean, they're always the, the coolest in our book, but I'm, I'm talking about the, you know, the, the rappers are going to be wearing the jerseys and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 right. So all the hangers on, not the cool people like us, you're saying, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> um, Adam, I've got a question for you, um, and, and this mm-hmm. is going to be a bit of a tough one, so bear with me if you don't mind. I know we're getting the tough ones out first. We'll, we'll move into something a little bit more uh, lighter uh, later in the interview, if you don't mind. But let's have a chat about mm-hmm. that, that uh, initial reception you received there, Atlanta. I think you could probably say it was mixed at best. Um, can you remind mm-hmm. us as to what that was all about, and and does that give you the fire to to prove those doubters wrong? Yeah, it was. I mean, you can't make this up. You know, <laughs> after that PK and the playoffs, if you had told me I'd be playing on Atlanta in a few years, I'd have called you crazy. Definitely, a lot of people still remember that, and uh, I'm not their favorite. But this has been a really cool learning experience and just growing experience because um, in anything, you really can't let anyone's opinion, opinion of you affect you, you know, and this has been a good practice in that. Uh, But what really struck me was like the outreach from so many others that just had words of encouragement and um, support for me just for, uh, for being a member of the club. And that's what I remember. Um, just all the, the welcome notes and and kind words. Uh, it also happened to be a terrible day to release my signing because they, they just announced that they had sent Julian Gressel away, who was a big fan favorite. So a lot of fans are taking their frustration out on me, which is understandable. But yeah, uh, growing into this whole situation, I was, I was kind of excited to throw myself into a lot of adversity because... Um, I know there's going to be so many people with a bad opinion of me and um, just to go about my business and and do the best I can without hearing and letting all that affect me has been a really good experience so far because I've been able to, you know, I don't, I don't block people and avoid it. I see it, but it just doesn't stick. And what sticks is, uh, all the people helping me out and uh, supporting me. Anybody that, that watches you, and you, you quickly became a fan favorite here in Phoenix, because anybody that watches you and sees your work rate and the amount of crowd that you cover would have 
no business not respecting you because anybody that knows about the game is going to know that, that you're the guy that, that you want to have out there. And, and, and now you did mention uh, what a good experience Atlanta's been overall. And, and uh, words that you used with me when we were chatting the other day was top class. And, and when I talked to Kevin Egan last year, that was something he really hammered home is, is what a top organization Arthur Blank does run there. So uh, tell us about some of the top class things that, that Atlanta does for their players. I think, it, like, like you said, it starts from the top and you have an owner and then every, every other exec that's willing to put real money to the team and the amount of resources available to the club is, you know, what everyone dreams about. So just that factor alone um, opens so many doors and allows uh, so many awesome top class things to happen just by the amount of resources provided to the club. And that's two twofold. I think it's the owner's willingness and then it's the city and the supporters willingness to get behind a team and make it such a big franchise and, um, where you can create such an atmosphere and, and so much capital to be able to in turn provide these top class amenities. So just like from top to bottom, the training ground, the fields, the travel, you know, the player treatment is just what you dream of as a pro. So um, Adam, I, I, I have to ask because I am a huge fan. Mm-hmm. Um, does that compare at all to Phoenix Rising in, in the USL? Obviously a smaller outfit, but it seems like they, they seem to have a similar sort of desire. Would I be correct in saying that? Yeah, I think you would. I think Phoenix is kind of generally looked at as the gold standard of USL and how they treat their players and how the fans um, support the club and how cool the brand is. And... uh I think it's the same as you can draw a lot of parallels to Atlanta, just in different leagues. I'm very, very happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes us feel good about supporting a club that, uh, you know, like you said, is considered the gold standard of the league and, and treats their players well. And uh, now uh, just to kind of switch gears here a little bit to, to all the field, Throughout your career, you've always been a guy that you produced every time that, that you come onto the field. Uh, however, earlier in your career, you maybe found yourself in some situations mm-hmm. where you didn't get as much playing time as you wanted. Uh, up until last year, I think uh, 1,100 minutes was the most she had played in a year. Last year, you got 2,000 minutes out on the, the pitch. Was it hard to finally find your niche, if you will, and, and then kind of walk away from that guaranteed playing time or, or knowing that, that you were the number one guy. Was that a hard thing to walk away from? Yeah, it was incredib- incredibly hard, uh, leaving such a good situation in Phoenix. You know, it kind of revitalized my career, and we came just short of winning, and um, I was ready to the battle for the, for the cup finally and get it uh, this year. And then all of a sudden I get a call in the off season and uh, in a few short weeks, it becomes a reality. And uh, I asked, I talked to Rick a lot about it because I respect him a lot and wanted to hear his thoughts. And he was so supportive of any decision I made. And what I, I kind of got from well, what I told him was, you know, uh, I, I want to play at the highest level. I want to push myself to be the best that I can, and, and this is a real chance at that. I know I'm, I'm leaving behind a, a great role and a great team and great people, but um, Atlanta is going to play like 40 games this year, and there's going to be opportunities there at the highest level. And I wasn't expecting them to come so soon, but, you know, things work out like that sometimes. Yeah, because Atlanta does have some of those extra competitions this year. So uh, when you came over, were you kind of told that uh, some of those extra competitions would be where you were going to get your time to shine at? Yeah, definitely. I think um, 
open cups always a good good tournament for for the depth players um at least the early rounds to get some minutes and then i know the the, the club had champions league on the schedule and just with champions league and mls games you know wednesday saturday wednesday saturday um the team definitely needs to draw on some depth at, in those moments so there's little things like that where i saw like yeah it might be just a small opportunity but it is an opportunity nonetheless and i've been around long enough to know that sometimes these opportunities don't come up, come too often so when you see one you just gotta jump in and, and risk it all so adam i have a, a very off the cuff question here um it looks like phoenix rising is, is putting a team together that's uh going to look like they're going to have a run in the cup this year in the open cup mm -hmm. what would happen if just by pure chance pure luck pure you know luck of the draw mm -hmm. what would happen if atlanta were i don't know set against phoenix rising how would you feel about that <laughs> oh, i say i hope it happens that'd be amazing it would be amazing. I know it's. I hope it's. I hope it's in the it's final. I hope it's here if it happens. That'd be something. Please don't uh, score. Wow. You know, great. It's, for, it's that would be impossible. great for you to return back to town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, you win that, you're in Concacaf next year. It's uh, pretty cool to think about. Yeah, that's yeah. how you guys are in this year. Is uh, is winning it last mm -hmm. year. That's how you're you're in the Champions League this year Ray, in Atlanta. So you guys have a uh, a cup to defend there as well, huh? Yeah, definitely. So you know, okay, let's let's shift gears a little bit further there if we can. Um, you are a fan favorite here in Phoenix. I I don't think anyone begrudges you the move to Atlanta. In fact, uh, most people are very supportive of it. They understand the situation. Mm -hmm. My favorite Adam John moment was the, the Super John goal, which I happened to be sitting right behind the goal when you did that. Uh, and it's been immortalized. <laughs> it was, man. I loved it. It's been immortalized in memes. So I've seen it from every angle you'd like to <laughs> you'd like to think of. What was your mm -hmm. favorite moment of last season with Phoenix Rising? Oh, man. I but, know that's... Uh... A There's there. a lot of good moments. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's, you know, I'm going to have to pick when we clinched the supporter shield and yes. <laughs> all the fans from, that went to the New Mexico game came into the locker room and I celebrated. That. Yeah. That, was, that was pretty epic. Oh, yeah. Hey, Adam, how up on this list of maybe your favorite Phoenix Rising moments, does the Panenka uh, penalty goal rank? Because that was probably one of oh, my that's... favorite moments from you. That's not top five, at least. Uh, I think it was so cool because I don't think anyone expected it. And I think yeah. that's um, one of my strengths is uh, people underestimate me. So uh, I always like to you know that you were going to try that? Oh, no way. He, uh, he came up to me after the game. Is like, what the heck was that? <laughs> but uh, when it goes in, uh, it doesn't really matter. That, yeah. that took some stones then to, to try that. I mean, that that's a kick that uh, most people won't even try. So, uh, what, at what point did you decide that, that that's, that's what the goalie is thinking? At, <laughs> at what point did you decide that? Was that something that it was spontaneous where you decided at the moment, or, or did you think, okay, first penalty kick I get, I'm going Panenka? Uh, I don't, I think it was pretty spur of the moment. I don't even think I've attempted a Panenka PK before. So it was pretty random, but I was also pretty confident because one, the goalie is not going to expect it from anyone. And then two, let alone me, you know, this big six foot three <laughs> white guy. So oh, I kind man. of was pretty confident with that. And uh, it's funny because he, <laughs> he, uh, he dove and then it was kind of slow. So he got back up and tried to get it again. And <laughs> it was just too high for him. You know, I was, uh, yeah, that, it was really funny. Uh, a video. Right. 
that, and it's on our website, so it's forever immortalized uh, where uh, where your Panaka kick it can be seen on our website uh, from right behind the Google. And if you don't know what a Panaka kick is, or if you haven't seen that Super John goal, we will repost that on our uh, Facebook and Twitter. So, so Adam, I got I to gotta take off here pretty soon. So I just got to ask about one more goal, kind of maybe what went through your head when, uh, as the play was developing. But I'm talking about the James Musa Hail Mary mm-hmm. uh, half mm-hmm. field pass that was probably, the, you know, 400 feet in the air. I'm, it was a little <laughs> bit of exaggeration. And it just <laughs> falls perfectly. And if I remember it correctly, mm-hmm. you just first touch, goal. Mm-hmm. What, what was going through yeah. your mind when you saw that ball just that high coming towards you? Well, I saw James got – he had some space. They weren't putting him under pressure. So I kind of um, – I don't know if he made contact because he was pretty far away, made eye contact, but uh, just kind of just got off on my bike. <laughs> and he lofted it up there. You know, I don't know if it was a windy day where the ball held up or not, but uh, it was just the perfect distance you know, far enough over the defender, but close enough to uh, to stay away from the goalie. And then the goalie got caught in no man's land. And so I knew I just had to think it over him. And um, I, I credit our two touch before every practice as uh, what enabled me to, to loft it over him. So, so nicely because every day we're working on uh, taking balls out of the air like that. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that was that was such a great moment for us as a uh, as as spectators, as supporters. Um, it was just awesome to see, uh, and I still watch the replays to this day. Awesome, it, cool. Really Pump up before every game. <laughs> <laughs> it, it needs to be on the uh, little pump up video that they play before home games this year in Phoenix. Here, uh, I yeah, think so I, too. I'd be okay with that. Adam, uh, do, you, do you think your um, your Phoenix Rising highlights are the highlights of your career, or do you have something else that, that might actually top that? Do you think? Ooh, I'd say a lot of them are. My personal favorite goal was my first in MLS. It was in my second professional game, and I got subbed on. The Red at Bull home versus Red Bull, and yeah. I scored yeah. against my idol Thierry Henry. <gasps> oh Scored man! The goal, you're and then right here, you're giving the game away. That's the next question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, he was 14 as well, and I scored against him, and then through the PK that Wando scored, then we won two to one. So it's quite a night. I don't think I slept after. Um, yeah, I remember staying up until it was light again. I was just too wired. Well, that has to be something else to play against your your idol, let alone score. And the the thing about uh, Aaron and myself is we are quite uh, quite fans of that number fourteen as well. Because uh, as you and I have discussed on on Twitter, uh, we share uh, the affection for the same Premier League team, and and you're hardcore to that. The fact that that well, what's the name of your dog? My dog is Gunner. <laughs> I won't explain it because you guys know. <laughs> yeah, and Aaron likes that. Huh? Uh, I do. I do. Um, I have a Ganosaurus in my house. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if anyone knows whose team this is. I wonder. So, all right, all right. Adam, put the rest of us out of our misery. What's your team? Arsenal Gunners. Hell yeah! <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's where it's at. Our favorite all time guest, right there, Adam John, everyone. Hey. So, what do you think about uh, how our chat is done? Or are you thinking that he's got him going in the right direction? Yeah, I, I think it's he's youthful and, you know, he learned under the best. So I, I, uh, I'm excited for the next, uh, see who we can bring in in the next few years um, and really uh, win some trophies. So speaking of trophies and, and teams that have not won trophies, Matt wanted me to ask you if the, if the Spurs were a USL team, 
what USL <laughs> team would be the Spurs? <laughs> New Mexico United. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I I think our fans are gonna oh, like this. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. I just that was, that. was easy. <laughs> why? Why, Adam? Why is it just because they're the the relatively local, or is it just they've got a big mouth and they can't back it up? <laughs> it's all of the above. Uh, they can't win anything. Um, they're local. No one really, I don't know, likes them. <laughs> unless you're from there but um yeah i'll stop there <laughs> all, right. all right i think that's probably fair hey you're already a fan favorite here adam um as i said before many are still following you at atlanta united and i saw plenty of them online commenting mm-hmm. about your, your debut for atlanta um mm-hmm. what do you want to say to your fans here in the valley i want to say that's so amazing that you're uh you're still following and and tuning in and i have to say i do the same and i'm uh the biggest rising fan i talk to the guys a lot and i'm um, so excited to uh watch phoenix this year um you know exceed expectations and uh, it's not going to be easy if we're going to have a target on our back from last year so i think that'll make the squad stronger and uh we'll learn a lot from from last year and, uh, you know, win the whole thing this year. So I wish you all nothing but the best, and I'll be following every week. I noticed you said we there, which is quite endearing. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to – it's going to take me a while to uh, stop doing that. But I feel like I'm still part of the family, and that's mainly due to uh, everyone that's, you know, supported me last year and – Still does to this day, and that's how I really feel. So I'm, I'm honored. Well, you're part of our family with the rising forever, as far as we're concerned, and that the memories of last year. I mean, that that's just a season that, that 20 years from now we're gonna say, hey, you know, you remember that 2019? I, I mean. Uh, you just don't have seasons like that. I had the 20 wins in a row through records. Uh, I mean, everything. I, I mean, I, I, I would, wouldn't trade anything in the world for, for last year. And the, you were just such a huge part of that. Well, thank you very much. So uh, our final question here, I guess, is on, on the back of that, that incredible season that you had last season, last year. What are your aims for this season? My aims for this season, for me in Atlanta. For, for yeah, okay. But I, was, I was thinking you personally, but yeah, okay. Let's let's do both. Why not? We got time. Team goals: uh, win Champions League. Be the first MLS team to do that. Win 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 awesome. MLS Cup. Uh, that's the easy answer. Uh, <laughs> individual goals. It's going to be a bold statement, but uh, I had this thought today. You know. Uh, I got USL best 11 last year. Wouldn't it be cool to get MLS best 11 this year? Man. So, throwing it out there. I um, like we'll you're aiming high, and I, I love the, the Champions League goal, and uh, I think that uh, uh, it, Unite and Cooker, that is Atlanta's slogan, right? Unite and Cooker. So, uh, we're going to we're gonna unite and Cooker, and uh, I think that we're going to see Phoenix Rising versus Atlanta United in that U.S. Open Cup final like we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. All right, Adam. Thank you for joining the show. For those Atlanta United fans listening, get behind this guy. He's extremely talented and committed, and when he says he's getting in the MLS All-11, you better believe he's going to bust a gut to get there. He's going to pull out some plays you'll talk about for the rest of your lives. Adam John, thank you for joining the show. Thank you, Adam. Hey, had a blast. Thanks, guys. Thank you.